In the early 2000s, in the heart of San Francisco, I led the engineering and IT, really all of technology for a scrappy little software startup. And uh, it was the dawn of Agile. DevOps was unheard of. The day that I arrived, a uh, an engineer told me that he made a change to the production application. And I said, oh, well, you know, how, how are we going to deploy that? And he said, oh, it's no big deal. I just copied it from my desktop. Uh, the closest thing we had to an issue tracking system was something we bought from a loan programmer in Russia, and we used it to try and manage our uh, issues and bugs and feature requests and incidents, although it took a lot of coaching to get our product team to even understand what the heck we were talking about when we wanted to break things into user stories. We had source code control in Perforce, but because only one developer could actually integrate their code at any one time, they had to check it out and check it back in and everything. Uh, the lead engineer came up with a system whereby whoever was integrating their code at that point in time, that moment, wore a strange fish-shaped hat on their head so that all the other engineers knew who was working on it and if the build broke, they knew who broke the build. That was as close as we got to DevOps in the early 2000s. So when I found out a few years ago that GitLab was hiring, I decided it was about time to solve that problem, to join the organization that had created really the best platform for DevOps ever. So I see the value of GitLab, I feel your pain, and I'd like to share a little bit about it today. Corporations and government organizations come to us with a list of goals or problems that they want us to solve. Uh, at the top of that list is often application security and compliance. Maybe they've recently had a security breach, or maybe they uh, exist under a regulatory regime that requires certain amounts, of, certain kinds of reporting. Uh, but more often, it's just a question of an awareness that security is absolutely important and that GitLab is a fundamentally a security company. But they're also looking at team performance. And sometimes it's around, hey, we aren't moving fast enough, but sometimes it's also around visibility into performance and wanting to understand where the bottlenecks are in terms of that software development supply chain that's so critical to so many companies today. Everybody's talking about AI transformation and wanting to hear the, the how they can take advantage of that transformation, but also maintain privacy and control over their own information. And finally, there's always this question of simplicity where companies are looking at a sprawling collection of tools that are used for different kinds of operations within the DevOps lifecycle and are really looking to simplify that and, and, and reduce cost in some cases. So, uh, we like to start by talking about security because security is really the, the 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 critical differentiator between GitLab and so many other options that are available, but also is really top of mind and often the most urgent and most critical requirement that comes along. And really, GitLab thinks about security in terms of the wide range of threat vectors across the entire software supply chain. So that includes the source code control, all of the dependencies that become part of applications that are developed, uh, the build process itself, and the, also the release and deployment process. And so GitLab actually has dependencies that map into all of those stages of the DevOps lifecycle and kind of provide guardrails related to security across every single stage. We also provide visibility into security risk across those different stages and across the entire portfolio of projects that a customer has on GitLab. This is an example of the vulnerability report for a, an active client and where, where we consolidate that information about the security posture of a broad range of applications. Furthermore, we make it not just an executive report, but also actionable insights that allow developers or security personnel to be able to really respond to those vulnerabilities and move quickly to categorize them, organize them, and address them, and ultimately remediate them. Okay, so team performance was that second goal. And here, there really is a focus on speed and helping our customers to 
deliver better products to their markets faster uh, or to deliver better products within their own company faster in the case of sort of internal IT organizations. And once again, our thinking is around the entire DevOps lifecycle, that it's not just about coding better or code quality or coding faster, although that is a key component, but really about how do you plan how do you create and verify everything? How are things packaged and deployed? And even how are systems monitored so that there's this kind of endless cycle through the whole tool chain? And the, the message here is around the, the, the unification of that, where so many companies come in with dozens of different tools and platforms and applications that they're trying to sort of stitch together to create a meaningful tool chain and a visible tool chain by consolidating that within GitLab, you're able to really increase that visibility, spread the access control across the whole platform, and increase that efficiency much more effectively. Typically, the, a lot of these tools in the tool chain end up being a part of that, but GitLab is the thread that wraps them all together. Now, uh, when we think about the sort of GitLab applying to the entire tool chain and applying to team performance, the thing that's that's that, that happens is that the security and compliance requirements actually can decrease team performance. So they can have a negative impact because obviously if you need to complete security reports or, uh, or, uh, or compliance reports, then that can actually take time away from the sort of the, the fast, speedy activities. Fortunately though, GitLab comes in with all these other parts. Not only do we make security and compliance as streamlined as possible, but also, because we're looking at the entire development process, we're able to improve team performance through some of those aspects of DevOps best practices like continuous integration and, and frequent deployments, trunk-based development. And finally, with our new Duo offerings, we're able to actually bring that AI component throughout the, the life cycle in a way that has a huge positive impact on team performance. And in fact, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is, well, how do you measure team performance and how do you know what, what changes are going to have the biggest impact on team performance? And here we really rely on the experts. Uh, there is a, a body of work where actual research studies have been performed on what makes a team perform well in the software development world. And it's been boiled down to the four metrics um, called the DORA metrics, although the word DORA means some other things in other contexts, but um, they are deployment frequency, lead time for changes, mean time to restore service, and change failure rate. Now, the, the key here is these are very lean practices. For example, deployment frequency obviously is, 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 a, is an unconventional thing. The, the, the winners in the delivery performance space are deploying changes multiple times a day, whereas some companies are still only doing a release once every six months. And so if you question whether deployment frequency is really a valuable metric, uh, let's take some time to really talk through that because it's, it is actually key to your overall performance that you be deploying frequently and then minimizing that lead time for changes and minimizing that, that the, the, the mean time to restore and the change failure rate so that so that you're you know, uh, uh, following those kind of lean and agile best practices. And GitLab not only helps optimize for these metrics, but also helps to measure them because we have uh, analytics built into GitLab that actually show you your deployment frequency, your lead time for changes. Now this of course requires adoption of GitLab's capabilities across the whole DevOps lifecycle. But once you've kind of adopted it, then it's easy at the executive level to kind of track, okay, we can track performance across the whole portfolio of projects, across the whole life cycle, according to research-based metrics of performance. Okay, regulatory compliance, sort of the other side of security, obviously really, really important. Uh, one of the big regulations that's come into play recently is the Bill of Materials, uh, U.S. federal regulation requiring software bill of materials for all companies that are selling into the federal government, but kind of being adopted across the board throughout industry as a best practice to understand where your software comes from. And this is where we're really thinking about software. Your company has software throughout the organization. Hopefully you're starting to tie that together into a unified platform of sorts. That's where this idea of platform engineering comes from. 
And we think of that really as a supply chain, as and think of yourself as a manufacturing or industrial operation, even if that's not your primary business with regard to software platforms. Regulatory compliance really matters there. So first off, GitLab builds in this federal compliant software bill of materials capability at the GitLab ultimate tier with our dependency analysis. And this allows you to actually generate that report, which is sort of expected in a lot of contexts uh, that says, where do all your dependencies come from within whatever software you're using? Uh, that's really only one example of the compliance capabilities of GitLab, but it's an important one that's kind of top of mind for a lot of customers right now. Okay, let's talk about AI, our favorite topic besides security. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, AI is everybody's thinking about it and nobody really knows what's happening with it. So there are really two different ways that GitLab supports your company's AI journey. Um, the first way is that we have the sort of usual and expected uh, nuggets where AI helps make things go faster. So Code Assistant is the most obvious and most well-known of those where developers who are actually working on code can actually have AI help to write the code for them or write the unit tests for them or write the comments for them so that the, the they can just write code more quickly. But coding is only about 20 to 21 percent is the sort of research based estimate of the amount of effort that goes into delivering software. And so uh, GitLab really brings that uh, AI capability to all aspects of the software development lifecycle. Once again, it's end to end. So it's AI helping you understand your security vulnerabilities, AI helping to summarize your issues and merge requests, AI helping you to prioritize your work, and uh, AI helping to choose reviewers for to look at code reviews. So really, uh, the GitLab Duo solution is about, once again, the end-to-end, -end, the entire supply chain. That really is a theme. If you get nothing else from this, it is that. Uh, Duo also considers privacy and transparency first. So both sides of that. Privacy in that your prompts that enter into our AI engine are never used to train the model, period, end of story. It is entirely private. Uh, but also transparency because we try to make it as visible as possible for you to see the the AI capabilities and how AI is being used and, and the benefit that you're getting from AI throughout the DevOps lifecycle. So, for example, uh, we actually offer a report that shows how the usage, adoption, and benefit of AI uh, across your entire team so you can really see that benefit visibly. Uh, different AI models for different use cases, unified data store, really thinking about how AI can help with that team performance and with that security across the life cycle, but also across the life cycle, but also we're developing GitLab workflow, which is really helping you even think about the entire life cycle. So that's really kind of the bigger picture AI. It's not just little helpers at different stages, but helping you plan and implement your entire projects within GitLab. Uh, across the the, the uh, across your entire portfolio, your entire platform that you're building. Now, I should add that there's another aspect of our AI offering, which is that we are on the journey toward creating an AI-driven platform where AI models and code live side by side and work harmoniously to create a platform that is GitLab. You're on the same journey because you're starting to uh, adopt AI. You're starting to train your own models. You have a team that's working on machine learning, maybe multiple teams that are working on machine learning. And so GitLab is also building in capabilities to go on that journey with you to allow you to, for example, manage your AI models, manage your model training and inference workflows so that uh, as you adopt AI more and more within your organization, GitLab is your partner in that. In many ways, GitLab is the platform for both code and AI models in the future. Okay, what does that journey look like? How do you get started with GitLab? How do you kind of go through this transformation to the platform-driven DevSecOps lifecycle with AI? Uh, you're probably in the third phase of this, which is you've sort of talked with your sales executives about the strategy. Maybe you've gone through a proof of value where we've kind of checked the check boxes of the technical capabilities of GitLab. And now we're talking about decision and what kind of subscription you're going to buy. 
The next phase is really kind of planning and creating those services to uh, migrate over from existing source code systems into GitLab to uh, enable your teams to be able to really realize that value. And uh, and and finally, this kind of this adoption, right, where where teams are using GitLab and and moving forward with it. Finally, we have a customer success program where we engage with you in the long term to make sure that uh, every user is getting as much value and every team is getting as much value as they can out of GitLab. This is important because GitLab is not a piece of software you can just buy and use and it's just done. Uh, it is a journey. We are on that journey with you using our transparency and collaboration values to really make sure that uh, we are partners with you along that pathway. This one's an eye chart, but it kind of talks about how different project teams might adopt GitLab. Sort of the typical path is first by mo moving source code over and our services organization can really help with that. Then by modernizing CI, CD, maybe replacing your Jenkins or your um, GitHub Actions. Uh, we've done a lot of work to kind of move companies over and to make that really easy, even fun for teams uh, to kind of adopt that higher performing, more tightly integrated CI, CD. And then we can start to adopt the DevSecOps, bringing that security because the CI, CD is sort of the automation layer, the kind of the engine that drives everything within GitLab. Then we can start adding the security components onto that. And finally, there's that value stream management as everything's been adopted where you as executives can actually see into uh, every stage of the life cycle and how different teams are performing with the sort of the, the, the metrics that are available within GitLab. Okay, what does this look like from an ROI perspective? Our next step with you would be to actually perform an ROI model using your financial data, uh, focusing on that revenue acceleration from faster cycle time, hopefully by bringing products to market faster, you're actually able to increase your market share and, and gain more revenue. Uh, also the higher productivity that comes from a better user experience than this like disparate collection of tools that you have today. Uh, fewer tools, lower integration costs, less people trying to like wire them all together. And uh, finally, just lower license costs. So there's a lot of components to the uh, return on investment for GitLab. And uh, we can actually work that through with you in your particular case, using your particular data to help you understand the value you can expect and also to help you justify that to your finance organization. We get fantastic feedback from major corporations and government agencies about the power of the, the DevSecOps platform approach, the power of the single platform re replacing the multiple tools and the power of the AI that's starting to come to play within GitLab. And uh, we hope that you will join us on that journey and uh, looking forward to taking the next steps with you.